the person that God has graciously brought away today is no other person than the generous representative of the deeper life Christian church worldwide pastor doctor WF Kumuyi please join your jam your hands together better to welcome this father of faith we are very highly privileged May the Lord use you to bless us tremendously today and bless our nation in Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The church of the living God, I said, praise the Lord. We thank the Lord who has brought us together. As a body of Christ, Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, members of the Church of the Living God. I will thank the Lord for the 50th anniversary of our independence in our nation, Nigeria. As we come to celebrate today, we also come to offer our praises as well as prayers unto God. I will believe in that the Lord will move a country forward, up, and we're going to achieve His purpose for the nation in Nigeria in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Before we begin, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. We give the glory to you. We're asking, Lord, to touch every heart and turn us in the right direction. We'll think the way you want us to think, move the way you want us to move, and be who you want us to be, salt and light for this nation, Nigeria. There'll be peace in this land. Progress in this land. Prosperity in this land. Unity in this land. And will be a beacon of light to many other nations in Africa and beyond in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As you look at our program, we're speaking tonight, very briefly, on unnecessary our diversity for national development. We've read the second Bible reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through to 18, thinking about the Corinthian church. It was one of the most gifted churches in the New Testament. Yet, it wasn't the greatest of the churches by any means. Why did they fail to reach the highest point? They failed to honest and to utilize the diversified gifts for their collective greatness. No doubt, as we look at our nation, Nigeria, we're endowed with citizens that have high qualifications and we're highly resourceful. The Lord has made it so himself. Yet, we have not matched our potentials, neither have we matched our possibilities. Like the Corinthian church, if you look at that church from chapter 1, in chapter 1, the Corinthian church and our nation, Nigeria, were beset by contentions and divisions. As we come to chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, our worldly wisdom is aimed at destroying 
the nation's deliverers. In chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, they were, and we are, obsessed with strife and personality cult. That's the chapter where they said, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Severus, and then another group standing at Luke said, I am of Christ. Coming to chapter 4, the problem in Corinth and the problem in our country is that they were, and we are blinded by selfish ingratitude. In chapter 5, they took pride, and we take pride in harmful dissipations. In chapter 6, we're told about those Corinthians of their harmful crimes against their fellow men, and it was taking too much toll on their national life. The same thing with us, our crimes, our iniquities, our evil are taking much toil, great toll on our national life. In chapter 7, there are challenges with our families. And as we look at our families in the nation, we have challenges with our families. The families are under siege. In chapter 8, they seem to be losing conscience in the nation. The things happened as if their conscience in Corinth was taken away. And the same thing we can see in our nation. We can see acts, actions, deeds that appear to tell us that our conscience is going away from us. In chapter 9, selfless service for the good of others was winning. And the same thing we see in our land today, that selfless sacrifice for the good of others is winning. In chapter 10, they were towing the past of previous people that destroyed themselves. And the same thing we see in our nation. It's like the majority of people, if not all, are towing the past of self destruction. Chapter 11 introduces us to Corinth, and it says they lack discernment. And because of that lack of discernment, we are weakening the church, and we are weakening the nation by the lack of discernment. In chapter 12, it's like our reactionary individualism. I have no need of you. And you think you have no need of me. That is depriving us of the personal, national greatness and progress we ought to have. What's the solution? Because we cannot prescribe a problem without telling what the solution is. Number one, rethink. Number two, repent. Number three, reconcile. Number four, reconnect. Number five, recommit. Number six, redirect. Number seven, renew. What do I mean by that? Number one, rethink our priorities. Does the country still have a priority? Does the church have a priority? Rethink our priorities. Number two, repent of perverted propensities. Anywhere you went in the early church or in the early world, first century world, when they said a Corinthian that spoke a lot. And when you travel around today and they say that's a Nigerian, without saying more, that says quite a lot. A Corinthian, a Nigerian. And we need to repent of those perverted propensities that earned us that kind of bad title. Number three, reconcile for peaceful partnership. We need each other. You need me, I need you. The North needs the South. The South needs the North. The East needs the West. Reconcile for peaceful partnership. Reconnect, number four, 
for purposeful pursuit. We have something to pursue for ourselves in the present time and for posterity that is still to come. Because of that, for the sake of our own happiness and for the sake of the preservation of our inheritance, our heritage, for the coming generation, we need to reconnect for purposeful pursuit. Number five is to recommit to positive principles. It's the one that has principle that will stand. A man, a woman, a family, a nation having principles, positive principles. We need to recommit ourselves to that. Number six is to redirect our plans and projects. What's the foundation of those plans? What's the reason for those plans? And redirect and then renew our passion for progress. This nation will move forward in Jesus' name. As we look at the Bible reading, we've read already that he is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 14 all through to verse 19. There are three things I want to bring to your notice that we need to think about as a nation. Number one, interdependence. Interdependence. Number two, interconnection. And number three, interrelationship. Number one, the interdependence of diverse potentials for national development. Diversity in the body is ordained of God. Diversity in the church is ordained of God. Diversity in the nation is God ordained. This God ordained diversity is purposeful. It is for usefulness. It is for record. It is for progressive achievement, for growth and prosperity. Yet, unless each diverse member of the church, each diverse member of the nation will recognize that and accept its own role in the whole body, diversity will divide rather than unite. And diversity will destroy rather than build up. Think about the human body. That illustrates the interrelationship of diverse potentials in nation building. The human body is strategically complex and yet united with unparalleled interdependence, interrelatedness. In the nation's interdependence and harmonious coordination is our strength, our wisdom, our glory, our peace, our progress, our productivity, our greatness, and our expected position in the Committee of Nations. The most important characteristic of the body is unity. Emphasis on diversity results in division, results in envy, in unhealthy acts, perpetual discontent, negative attitude, under development as well. Selfishness is never satisfied. This is mine. That is mine. I must hold on to this and keep everything to the exclusion of all others. There'll never be any satisfaction. Envy is never content, never satisfied. Interdependence, interrelationship, interconnection, is that is one is the thing that lies at the bottom of everything the promise he has given us and the power for national development i've been spoken about interdependence now we come to interconnection of diversified people for national development it's still in that passage in first corinthians chapter 12 and we'll see the interconnection of the different people, different gifts, and different parts of the church. Unqualified, rugged individualism is the bane rather than the bone of growth. 
of, pro of progress, of development, and glory of any nation. Disconnected and disjointed members of the body cause pain, not gain. Disconnection, aloofness, detachment, are the hidden demons of darkness, dysfunction, disease, needless poverty, and suffering. The philosophy of independence that promotes self-sufficiency. That kind of philosophy contradicts God's plan for each individual and for the nation. Man's inclination to do his own thing at his own time, in his own way, all by himself, without depending on others or connecting with others of different perspectives is short-sighted and disadvantageous to say the very least. God's wisdom has placed diversified people of different cultures, different backgrounds, different talents, and different learning and different training in the same nation like ours to serve God and to selflessly serve each other. In God's infinite wisdom and incomprehensible providence, he has put seemingly diverse people together to fulfill the divine will. What God has connected together, let not short-sighted reasoning put asunder. Connection brings light. All these lights you see around us here is connection that brought that. Connection brings power. Connection brings health. Connection brings enlightenment, education. Connection, connection brings productivity. Connection brings progress. Connection brings happiness. It brings fulfillment. Any nation intent on fulfilling the great predictable destiny must make interconnection of the diversified populace a non-negotiable. Our national development depends, demands that those who say they don't have any need of me and those who think I have no need of you both of them must come together to realize their divinely ordained interconnection. Number one, interdependence. Number two, interconnection. Number three, interrelatedness. Point number three now is the interrelationship of the similar personalities for national development. Again, as you look at that, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you see that the members of the body are dissimilar, yet very much interrelated. Their functions are not interchangeable. You cannot tell the ears to perform the function of the eyes. Neither can you tell the legs to perform the functions of the hands. There is an apt illustration for the nation, personalities who carry an impression of supposed inferiority, and others who may wear the cloak of supposed superiority. All the same, they're still interrelated. Each one has an important part. You have an important part. I thought somebody there will say amen. We all have parts to play. Neither the reaction of private indifference, nor the response of proud independence is profitable, nor pleasing unto God. The lungs are not as visible as the legs. The internal organs of the body are not as noticeable as external limbs and photographs. The heart and the head serve every other member of the body without competition, without canal comparison, without confusion of roles and function. 
Some weak internal members are vulnerable, while some strong external members are visibly sturdy. They are all different, they are all diverse, they are all dissimilar, yet each is necessary for our destined progress and development. Some members, like the heart, the brain, the kidneys, the lungs, need care for necessary preservation. Others like the air, the nails, the face, the fingers, complement the well-being of the whole body. Though every well-informed person is more concerned and more careful, with his heart than his air, yet no part of the body is deliberately ignored, no part of the body is deliberately neglected, no part of the body is deliberately overlooked in the nation. Mutual support and encouragement, sincere recognition and involvement of all well-meaning and qualified citizens are necessary to avoid wastage of lives and wastage of resources. There's no disdain for anyone, for one another. No rivalry, no unhealthy competition, no false humility, no fatal pride. No inferiority and no vain superiority. There is no retaliatory indifference and there is no reactionary independence. We can, we must, and we must put the past behind us. This nation, starting with the church, will put the past behind us. We must put the past behind us. And then we unite together as a great irresistible force to move ahead and to move our nation onward. This nation will rise again. Peace will reign again. Prosperity will overflow once again. How will that happen? You and I, all of us together, the whole church without exception, in the whole nation, with interdependence, with interconnection, with interrelationship, will be on our way to national greatness and progress. We're moving there. We are unstoppable. Somebody there help me shout, we are unstoppable. Our nation will make progress. Ministering Amen. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, he was talking on harnessing our diversity for national development. And the points he raised were the interdependence of diverse potentials for national development. And he also talked about the interconnection of different people for national development. Challenges. Represent